We all hear terms like data science, AI, machine learning, and big data. This presentation walks through some of the core tools practitioners use and how my tool, Buckaroo, helps their workflows. This presentation is for my less technical friends and family. Don't worry if you don't understand the code. This is meant to give a broad overview. Python is the preferred language of data scientists. It is easy to learn because it uses simple keywords. In this example, we define a variable a and set it to five. Then we define a function that returns the argument sent in plus five. Then we call that function with a, and we get a result of 15. Matrix math is at the heart of image recognition and machine learning. The open source NumPy library extends Python with fast matrix math operations, 25 to 100 times faster than raw Python. Travis Oliphant wrote NumPy while earning a PhD in electrical engineering. I worked for Travis from 2012 to 2014. Here we see NumPy generating random numbers, performing a linear regression, and then plotting it with the open source matplotlib library. A line of regression around the random numbers. In 2011, Wes McKinney created Pandas on top of NumPy to help with his work as a quant researcher. Pandas makes regular tasks with real-world data much easier, like cleaning dirty data and manipulating time series observations. Here, we are reading in city bike data from January 2014. There are 300,000 trips, and each trip gets a row with a start station name, end station name, trip duration, start time, and stop time. By default, Pandas only shows the first five rows and last five rows. We can start performing some analysis on this data. We can take the mean of trip duration. We can take value counts of station name. So Pershing Square was the most popular station. Railroad Ave was the least popular. We can group by station name and get the mean of trip duration. This is similar to a pivot table in Excel. We can grab the histogram of trip duration. This doesn't show a lot of data because the scale has to accommodate extreme outliers for long trips. But if we filter between the first and 99th quantile and take the same histogram, we now see there is a mean around 500 seconds and a long tail out to 2,500 seconds. You are seeing this presentation in the Jupyter Notebook. The Jupyter programming environment was created by grad students in 2011 to be used interactively and to leave an artifact that combines narrative text, analysis code, and graphics. The interactivity is key to analyzing and manipulating data. This is also a fairly different environment than most programmers use, where they are typing text that is executed and against fairly static data. Thank you for bearing with me this far. You have now seen a small slice of the PyData ecosystem. These are all powerful tools, but a bit cumbersome to use to type all these things. I created Buckaroo because I was tired of typing the same thing all the time when I analyzed data sets. Here, we have seen the same data set with Buckaroo. We can scroll left and right through the columns. We have histograms built in that are filtered between the first and 99th quantile. We have summary stats, min, mean, standard deviation, and max. And we can sort by columns. For the work that you do every day as a data scientist, this is a huge leap forward compared to the base case. I even created a low-code interface for Buckaroo, where you can perform some of the same actions by just clicking through. And here we're going to take that same group by of start station name and trip duration, how many trips came from that station, and then we can look at the Python code for this. Buckaroo has many features, including color mapping for columns. Here we're going to look at trip duration with a color map that shows where it occurs on the histogram spectrum. So we can tell this 1500 number is an outlier. This lets us quickly identify outlier rows and see how they re relate to other columns in the same data set. At Buckaroo, you can also add a summary stat. Here, we're going to add an is monotonic summary stat. Look at is monotonic. We can just toggle over to that. And we see the start time is monotonic, which makes sense because you don't have a, a trip starting and then the next row have a trip before that start. You can also add post-processing functions. Here, we're going to add a row diff function that compares each row to the row above it and subtracts them. Summary stats are now running on the post-processed data. Pandas is a little slow. 
there's a new library called Polars, which operates in parallel on each column. It's faster. Buckaroo also works with Polars. So this is Buckaroo. And this is, I built it because you are looking at data all the time. And even if you're not looking at new data, you're looking at data you've already seen and comparing it to different results. If you run a model on different inputs, you want to see how it changed. Design Buckaroo with sensible defaults and users can simply plug in their own analysis code and toggle between views. Because data in the wild is so diverse, there's not a single correct way to view it. Instead of coming up with a single best default, Buckaroo allows multiple analyses to be quickly toggled through. In case you're wondering why I named it Buckaroo, a Buckaroo helps on a farm to wrangle cattle. Buckaroo, the widget, helps you wrangle data. Thank you.